Good night, fellow punters. The clock on the wall says six minutes past ten on Sunday night, the 3rd of September. I'm in Langerland, back again in the the real capital of Ireland, as the Cargonians might say. Um, not too far from Hinchy's pub. I was going to go for a pint, but it's gone too late of an early start. So uh, I slept there for about three quarters of an hour. Um, so there'll be no pints tonight. What about in Killarney tomorrow night? We had uh, sort of a late start leaving Dublin this morning. We didn't get on the road until quarter to ten. Some of the the young women had to pause their nose more than once, it seems. Uh, I was up, up here himself at the breakfast for eight. Uh, one of those buffet. I'm not in love with them old buffet style uh, breakfasts and... There was no pancakes or waffles or anything like that. So it was a couple of hash browns and fruit and a bit of toast. And we saved a bit of toast. And so did the rest of them for the ducks in Killarney tomorrow. That's our first port of call. The Ross Castle in near the lakes there. Um, so uh, we went, um, in, they wanted to stop in Kilkenny. So we pulled in the Marble City. We were leaving uh, the castle and I got a tip on the shoulder. A fellow says to me, are you who I think you might be? I says, who do you think I might be? And he says, Mickey D. I says, that's me. He said, I'm Patsy. Uh, he said, uh, so he said, uh, you gave me the odd winner a odd time. I said, thanks very much. Have you answered for today? I said, there's three live chances on the channel today. He says, what's the best one? So I said, Twilight Jet. So off he went and uh, delighted uh, that he spoke. Uh, the people that was with me, of course, didn't say, are you famous or what? How did he recognise you? So I had to sort of explain to them. But uh, I did, the, they're not into horses at all. So uh, there wasn't much more about it. Uh, the more into eating, drinking and music. And they're a good gang, I must say. Great chat on the bus between the lot of them. And they're a very close-knit family. As most of the Americans seem to be all summer with me. Uh, we headed from there then uh, I rang Kenny I called him Danny in the moorings in Dungarvan because I was in the mood for roast beef on a Sunday and he said it was packed but uh, I said it'll be after 3 when we get there or 3 o'clock so he said he'd hold a table for 9 for half 3 uh, we got there about 20 to 3 uh, so they had a drink and they walked along the pier and there was a, a heap of people, and I mean hundreds, in the distance. And we were wondering what the hell was going on. Was look, was there, I thought it's what they were looking for, uh, somebody missing a person in the sea or something. But apparently on the 3rd of September every year, the water is as, it's a, at its lowest in the town. And the walk and uh, sort of a pilgrimage across the sand. And that's what they were doing. So the Daisha were in prayer in today as we've seen them in the distance so I didn't get talking to anyone I thought somebody might come back in uh, but we were there for a couple of hours so we had our dinner but I nearly got a heart attack when I, I was the first one to order and I said I'll have roast beef and she said I'll have to check to see is there any left I said I'll burst out crying so she's had one dinner left one roast beef because they were going to have some as well because I had, I had recommended that we'd have the roast beef today so I had it anyway. Huge place of stuff. Delightful. No dessert. I had a place for it. I, I, I left a bit of broccoli after me and a couple of carrots. The place wasn't cleaned like usual. So they had two pints. They were on uh, Hop House. They had two pints apiece. Uh, yeah, they had seven, seven of them. One of them had something else. But they all had a couple of pints. They were in good spirits on the way back to Cork. We got here. They are staying in the Imperial in town. There was no spare room for me there when they were doing the bookings with four rooms, you see, so I'm in a and b but it's fine, I said here before. This is where they have the farm animals out the back, so I'll have my nice egg in the morning with uh, pancakes. Anyway, we made we sort of Twilight Jet ran well enough today, as I expected him to sort of to win that race. Um, that was, I seen that, that one and the next one, I didn't see Anna Mana, it didn't look like she stayed. Uh, she hit the lead at the mile pole, similar to when she won before, but she didn't stay at the extra furlong. Hardly surprising when her half-sister is uh, 
and Osira, who's a five furlong specialist. Um, I wouldn't say she'd be running at nine furlongs again. Uh, we may get her again at a mile, but uh, probably the handicapper might have a handle on her as well right now. I'd like to get a handle on Mr. Cobden for leaving that horse at the back of the pack. Horse that ran second in a three miles two, uh, had the toe to, 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 you know, to come late. That should be up closer to the pace. I was saying he might have learned from before, but who am I to criticise a man of Harry Cobden's stature? But we had each win only last night at five to one, so we didn't lose anything, so... Made a profit on the day. Uh, anyway, on to tomorrow. Uh, Monday. Not the most... Uh, sort of... Not the greatest of days for punting, but there's a horse there at the 6 o'clock at Windsor. I tipped it up on the 15th of July and it was a non-runner because it rained. But on its previous run, it's entitled to be a 2-1 to favourite right now, I think. Uh, it ran into one that day, ran into that uh, quick change. Uh, and if you look at quick change, it was rated 78 that day. We were getting the weight for age allowance, all right, but quick change won that one off 78. Then it's ran in three listed races since. It's gone up in the 90s now. It was second the last day in France to, uh, and was third in France as well. A bit of cut on the ground is no harm to that. So uh, this was uh, five towns. He's in the yellow in second. And I thought he ran very well this day. But he just ran into one. Quantum one. light being tailed down. Very well and line behind those. But quick change. The one to catch approaching the final furlong. Out in pursuit is five times. These two clear of a lead and Bintaldar. Quick change still there by over a length. Five times trying to run her down. Half a furlong to go. Bintaldar's back in third. Quick change though finding plenty on the front end. And quick change driven out. Beat five. Run fairly well. And the other one has franked the forum since. Now there is two last time winners in this. But I think... Uh, We'll go all right tomorrow if if it transfers that far. Uh, it's 82 days ago now, you see. Uh, similarly, where are we here? In Roscommon tomorrow, a horse we back the last time in Galway, genuine article. Tipped him up on the strength of him winning previously in Killarney, won a maiden. Uh, this was over eight and a half furlongs. As we watch the race, he's in the famous Judman colours at the back, but runs on really well up the hill. Malbay Madness and Genuine Article, the final couple, turning in for the final furlong and a half, and they download the tote, half handicap for three rows, Lon Kinta comes to press, Sea Gardens, and take up the running inside the final furlong, couple of lengths, then a Malbay Madness, next on the inside is a fading Duke of Leggett, Genuine Article has always been last, it's Lon Kinta, coming on the outside is Malbay Madness, going towards the line, Malbay Madness, and Lon Kinta, Lon Kinta on the inside. Malbay Madness came out uh, a few days later in Galway and won. Uh, Lauren Kinsha has run well since. It uh, was actually it was pulled out of a race in England there recently as well. Uh, the danger is uh, Shazan, without a doubt. Um, it ran well enough the last day. And it, it if you look at the horses that it, it was in a group three, Beat Livio Emilio, that's one for us in Galway, but it's not the best horse in the world. Like, But if you look at the horses at this, uh, it has no rating give, uh, as yet, but it was just behind a 96 rated horse. It was ahead of a 102 and 104, and 102, 101 and 103 were ahead of it that day. Ran, that was over a mile. It didn't fold when the horses passed it out. Uh, the step up and trip is likely to suit. I think it might suit our one better. Safety net, um, reverse forecast, genuine article, and shields. And each way horse tomorrow, one we won on before, but it's a while ago. That's Jigan Preston. We it's rated 58. Don't forget that now for a minute. And we look, it has never been rated as low before. If you look back through its history. 
first mark it got when it was with Gerald Lyons was uh, 74. It won out 75, although it was a claimer in Limerick. Up to 82. Didn't win again until we won on it in Sligo in the 3rd of August last year. Uh, had a, got out in front that day. I was in Sligo that day and it won uh, beat Ducky Mallon. Then it won again off 67 in Down Royal, 7 furlongs. So it went up again into the 70s, but it, it's coming back down again and it's at its lowest rating ever. I, as I do say at times, water finds its own level. It's with the yellow hat on the rail back about 7th or 8th in Leperstown recently on a 7 furlongs on good ground. Great, they're abreast, not so far in front of Eastern and Wind, and then high time you won and Geek and pressing at half knots and Lady Arwen next with Invincible Lawn and Chapa Joad in the middle of the track is a Manorellis racing to the final furlong and they're bunching, it's Mowgli from on the outside, Eastern Wind, up the rail Geek and pressing, high time you won, half knots trying to join them, then Fetty Bank, Lady Arwen Furnace Creek weakens, driving finish, 150 yards to go it's high time you won half knots on the outside There's a decent enough race that decent hard around him uh, that was, there was a 7 point claim around that day uh, Chris Hayes comes back tomorrow there is a couple of, you know that sort of there or thereabouts as well but it, they're paying 4 places in this it's a 13 to 2 shot I'm after backing it a few minutes ago 13 to 2 with 365 paying 4 places um, there, there's a couple of horses uh that made the shortlist. Voice of Reason won for us before. Tipped it up as well in Galway. Won a maiden for us in Killarney. It, um, the ground went against it totally in Galway. Drifted from threes to sixes. Fell out the back of the television. Um, would have a chance. Luke Short, unlucky enough the last couple of times. Unlucky horses can always be unlucky. It would have a shot at being placed at sevens there rather than fours would be. Uh, similarly, another one that has a uh, and each way shot there is all lies ahead on but at the ground I'm not so sure about it it's good to it there but I think it's going to be good ground because it's going to be a dry in day tomorrow in Roscommon I was told that the weather was good today and the sun came out just at uh, four even though it was sunshine all day in Dublin but on its um, it won on heavy ground of 77 uh, it was second on soft to heavy so it's it runs better with a lot of cut on the ground, so unless there was real cut on the ground, I wouldn't sort of go near it. But it just, I didn't mark out. But it, it, the ground, this is our Indian summer, really, isn't it? So uh, that's about it. Um, yeah. So off. Out, we'll be out of Dodge in the morning at about nine and uh, I think there is a little bit of surprise news about the trip tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow night according to what I was told. So tune in for that. Bash the bookies over and out.